Hi, and welcome to my video on review four of exponential functions. And this review is on videos number 27 to 33. And also, each of my vi reviews are treated as a quiz, and this one is marked at a seven, so I have seven questions, and there's one mark for each question. And I have, this is page one of six, so I have five more pages. Here we go. What you can do is do each question, give yourself a mark of his right, and total each page, and put it on the bottom. And when you're finished, add up all the marks at the bottom of each page, and put it over seven. Let's go. Here we go. Number one, four thousand dollars is invested at a rate of three and a half percent annually for eight years. Find the amount to the nearest dollar if compounded continuously. Compound this continuously is using the base as e. So the equation a equals big A is the amount that you after a period of time a is the initial amount e is for continuous the base instead of a b it's an e for base and it's the rate which is r make it an r I was going to put r times time, number of years. So what we have, 4,000, that's the initial amount, $4,000. And the rate is 3.5%. So 3.5% is 3.5, one half is 0.5. Change the percent to decimal, move the decimal two places to the left. So it's 0.35. And we have time. Time is eight years, eight. And we have to find the amount that is compounded to continuously. So we're looking for A. Small a is 4,000. The base is E. And the rate is 0. Oh, 0. 0, 3, 5 times the number of years, which is 8. And we take a calculator and multiply decimal 0, 3, 5 by 8. We will get decimal 3, 5 by 8. We will get 0 0.28. So we end. Enter that into your calculator. Let's put my calculator here now and make sure you can see it. Turn on the calculator. So we have 4,000. And E is right here. And E is, remember, is 2.71828. 1, is an irrational number. But this is the exact answer. Oop, I cleared it now. Sorry about that. Let's do it again and not clear it. We meant to hit this exponent button. So the exponent is raised to decimal 28. And I hit enter. And I get 259252. So I take the calculator away. And I write that answer in. So it's 5292 decimal. So that's in dollars. And it says find the amount to the nearest dollar. So the answer is 5,290. And to the nearest dollar is three. $5,293. Okay, let's do another one. A car depreciates in value 24% every two years. Find the initial price to the nearest dollar if after eight years it is worth fourteen thousand two hundred and thirty nine dollars again we have the equation we haven't it's not continuous this time it is a equals small a b to t over c t over c and we look through depreciation is going down so that means the base is one minus r so i can put that in now so A, 
large A, base is 1 minus R to the T over C. And the rate is 24%. So 24% is decimal 24. And we have every two years. So that's the increment change is every two. And it says the initial amount. So the initial amount is small a. That's what we're looking for. And the time that it takes to we go down to or get to this amount is eight years and RJ is 14.239. So let's put all that in the equation. So 14.239, we're looking for A, which is the initial amount, and the base is 1 minus 0 0.24 the time is 8 and the increment change is 2 so that's 14.239 a 1 minus 0 0.4 is 0 0.76 and 8 divided by 2 is 4 so if we take our calculator and we raise to this power. So decimal 76 to the fourth power is 0 0.3334 approximately. And if we divide by decimal 0 0.034 on each side, they cancel out. So A becomes, when we divide, we get four two seven zero eight point four six and we want it to the nearest dollar so a is forty two thousand and seven hundred and eight dollars because this is a five this is less than five so we don't change the eight so forty two thousand seven hundred and eight dollars so it'll give us, oh sorry, if you have this 5,293, give yourself a mark. If you have $42,708, give yourself a mark. And tote up the page, give yourself two marks for that page. Okay, let's continue. The population of a town grew from 10,000 to, to 80,000 in six years. Find its doubling time. Again, the equation large a, small a, b to the t. Notice we said c, but this time we have doubling time. So we're looking for the doubling time, question mark. And doubling time means my base is 2. So the initial amount is a is 10,000. And Large A is what it grew to is 80,000. And it did this in six years. So 80,000 started with 10,000. Base is doubling to, and we have at the time is six years. So we're looking for D. Increment change is C, but this time is doubling. The base is 2, but the doubling time is a D instead of a C. So that's 80,000 divided by 10,000. 2 to the 6 over D. So we're dividing each side by 10,000. That cancels out. That gives us an 8. That's 2 to the 6 over D. So 8 is 2 cubed. And that's 6 over D. So the bases are the same. So 6 over D equals to 3. Put the 3 over 1 to get a fraction. Cross multiply. 
3 times d equals 6 times 1, 6. Divide by 3, and we have d is equal to 2. So the doubling time is every two years. And it makes sense, because if you have 10,000, and you double it, you get 20. Double it again, you get 40. Double it again, you get 80. So that's in, this is two years, two more years, two more years, so there's the six, so everything. Let's just check it out. Number four, a stock price declines from $110 to $70 in 20 days. If it declines at a constant daily rate, find a rate to the nearest tenth of a percent. Oh, gotta go back, I forgot again. If you have two for doubling time, give yourself a mark. So, again, the equation, A, large A, small a, B to the T over C. And again, it's a decline, so the base is one minus the rate. So we can have, we want to put that in right away. We can, since we have it, just to put it in. And we have A, what it starts with is $110. Large A went to 70. So we can put uh, large A is 70. And we started with $110. And the, it's declining at a constant daily rate, so that means C is 1. And we want to find a rate, which is, it's in 20 days, so 20 days, it's T is 20. That's how long it took to decline from 110 to 70. And we want to find R. So... T is 20, C is the daily rate of 1, so 70 equals 110, 1 minus R to the 20th power. So we take 70 and divide it by 110, and we take each side and divide it by 110. So that gives us 1 minus r to the 20th power, and 70 divided by 110 on the calculator comes 6363, three, three. keeps on going, it's continuous. And so now we have the 20th power, so to, to get rid of the 20th power, we'll do 1 over 20. And we'll raise that to the 1 over 20. So we raise that. That cancels out, so we get 1 minus r. Now I use my calculator. Again, I got, here we go. Turn it on, clear it. So I have uh, decimal 636363, and I'm going to raise it. Now, be careful, I have a 1 over 20, so I'm going to put that in a bracket. 1 division 20. There it is. I have to put this in a bracket because if I don't it'll take this and raise it to the one power and then divide it by 20. So you have to put this exponent in a bracket here. When I do I get 977654 so I just move the calculator and I have okay that's Nine, oh, negative nine, seven, seven, six, five. So we bring the arrow over and make it positive. Move the decimal nine, seven, seven, six, five. So R becomes zero decimal zero, two, two, three, five. Now the reason I went down so far because we got to round this to the nearest tenth of a percent. So that percent is 2.235. And I got to round to the nearest tenth of a percent, so the answer is 
0.2% to the nearest tenth of a percent. And give yourself a mark if you have that right. Two marks for that page. Okay, continue. Work out the problems. Now we have the problem dealing with cooling. We have a cup of water. A cup of water cools. A cup of 80 degree, or I say water, water and coffee cooling down. We have a cup. A cup of 80 degree coffee is in a room of 22 degrees Celsius. If it cools at a rate of 10% every two minutes, find its temperature to the nearest degree after 20 minutes. So the equation is T equals A B T over C plus K. So the 80 degree, what we have is coffee is starts off at 80 and it cools to 22 so that means the initial temperature is 80 and a plus k because the room temperature is 22 we got to find what a is how much is going to cool so a is 80 minus 22 so it cools down 58 degrees so if we put 58 degrees in here, B, T, over C, plus, and it cools down to the room temperature is the asymptote, because it can't go any lower than 22. K is 22. Okay, now we have the cooling. So that means the base is 1 minus R. So I could put that in here, but let's work this out. The rate that it cools, the rate is 10%. And 10% is 0 decimal. 1 or 0 decimal 10. So the base is 1 minus 0 0.1. And so the base is decimal 9. So T equals 58, base is 0 0.9, and we can fill in here the 22, but let's go and find what the time is. The time increment change is C, so C works out to be every two minutes, and the time that it cools down to, we want to go for 20 minutes, so that's T is 20 over every two minutes. So T equals 58 degrees, 0 0.9. 20 divided by 2 is 10, plus the 22. And if we take that and we put it in our calculator, there we go. Turn on our calculator, and we'll enter that in. We have 58, bracket, 0.9, I could use 0 0.9, just 0.9, raised to the tenth power plus the room temperature. And that gives us 42.22. So let's move the calculator. And we got T is 42.22. And it's in Celsius, but we want it to the nearest degree. So the temperature is 42 degrees. If you have 42 degrees, give yourself a mark. Okay, let's continue. There's a couple more questions to do. Now we have a video that I did before, but to review the sort of question we had in that video, solve uh, for x and y. So I got two equations with x and y, I'm gonna solve them for x and y. So the first equation is the square root of 9 raised to the x plus y equals one third. And we have to raise these to the same base. So one third is 3 to the negative 1. And 9 is 3 squared. We want to raise it x plus y. So that gives us. This is the power of a power, so it's 3, 2 times x, plus 2 times y. 
equals 3 to the negative 1. Now we have a square root. So in the square root, we got 3 to the 2x plus 2y. And square root understood to be 2, so we divide by 2. So what we have there is that the square root of, we have a power of a power. I'll explain that one. Um, that's okay, but this one is that's an n, and that's a a b to the x. Then this is b to the x over whatever this power is, because that's a square root. That's a two. So there it is. So that gives us three to the x plus y equals three to the negative one. Two x divided by two is x. Two y divided by two is y. So that means x plus y equals negative 1. Okay, now we have 8 to the x. We have another equation. So we got a 4 and an 8, so the base is 2. So 2 cubed is an 8. 4 is 2 squared. And this is a power of a power, so just to explain that one, which I did right, I, I didn't do it here, but let me make sure. So that if you if you have b to the a raised to the c power, so that's b to the a c. So that's two times x plus y, is because of power of a power, and that's true here. So this is two to the three x equals. Now, 2 times y is 2y, and 2 times negative 3 over 2 is negative 3. Both of them are base 2s, so we have 3x equals 2y minus 3. Now, we have to line up the equations, so that's 3x minus 2y equals negative 3. So let's call this equation one, and let's call this equation, this one here, equation two. So let's put them one on top of the other, and we'll eliminate one of the variables. So I have them all lined up. So if I take this equation and this one, if I'm s a negative, so if I multiply by two, multiply this by one. If I multiply by 2, I get 2y plus, sorry, 2x plus 2y equals negative 2. Multiply by 1, I get 3x minus 2y equals negative 3. Draw a line, they cancel out, I get 5x equals negative 5. So I divide by 5 on each side, so x becomes negative 1. Now, to get the value of y, I'll sub x equals negative 1 into. So I can go into equation 1 or I can go into equation 2. Equation 1 is easier to sub into. So x plus y equals negative 1. x is negative 1. Negative 1 plus y equals negative 1. y equals negative 1 plus 1 y equals zero and again i did this but if that's negative one that's negative one y has to be zero because they're each side is the same you can draw that and get the zero so now so the solution x is negative one and y is zero that satis that's the values of x and y that satisfy these two equations and if you have that give yourself a mark Okay, and the last video we did in this unit was find the equation of the exponential which has an asymptote. So k is the asymptote. We had this equation all the time before, but now we got an asymptote. So we have x is x approaches infinity, y approaches two, and we have the y-intercept is 11, 
the points 2, 5 and 4, 3 lie on the curve and I'm saying it's a decay curve. Well, if you think about it, just look at it this way. Let's draw out a graph, x and y. As x approaches infinity, y approaches 2. So let's say that's 2 right there. So as x, approach, as x goes to the right, the y is going to 2. So that's an asymptote. So what happens? As you, there's the asymptote. The y is equal to 2. So it's coming down like this. And as it goes, as x goes to infinity, this gets closer and closer to y equals 2. So you can see it's a decay curve. So that means we have we have an asymptote of y equals 2. So that means the equation y equals a b x over c plus 2. Now we have a y intercept and a y intercept of 11 means when x is 0 y is 11. We also have two more points of 2 5 and 4 comma 3. But if you notice I put the uh, y-intercept in. The reason is, is that notice the x values differ by 2. So that means the increment change on the x is 2. So c is 2. So let's write that in our equation. y equals a b x over 2. c is 2. The asymptote is 2. Okay. Now, let's go with I'm putting the y-intercept back in. Notice this is x and this is y. So if y is 11 and x is 0, sub that in, we get 11. 0 over 2 is 0, so we got b to the 0 plus 2. And b to the 0 is 1. So 11 minus 2 equals a. So a is 9. So the equation is y equals 9 b x over 2 plus 2. So every time I get one of the unknowns, I put it in. I, I keep on working. Now, I have to get the b. So I have x and y and b. So I have an ordered pair. I already use 2 and 11. So I'll use the ordered pair, which is 2 comma 5. Again, that's the x and that's the y. So I'll put 5 here. 9 b x is 2. So I get 2 over 2 plus 2. So 5 equals 9. That's b to the 1 power. So I have 5 minus 2 equals 9b. And this time I let the 9b stay on the right. I move the 2 over to get a 3. And I divide by 9. So the 9's cancel. And 3 and the 3 goes once. 3 and the 9 goes 3. So the base is 2. Again, remember we said it was a decay curve. Decay curve. A decay curve has 0 less than b less than 1. Decay curve has the base between 0 and 1. Growth has the base greater than 1. So the equation, I'm going to put it in right here. Y, A is 9. The base is 1 third. We get X over 2 plus 2. So that's the equation that represents this information. And if you have that equation correctly, give yourself a mark. And total of all the pages. And when you do, come back to the initial page. And you put it over 7, divide 7 into the numerator, get a decimal, move the decimal two places to the right, you get a percent, and you have your uh, fourth review done. That brings us to the end of the exponential unit, and hopefully everything went well. And if you like my video, click the like button, click the subscribe button, visit my math website, www.mathfortyexplained.com, to find more information about me, my videos, and the content. That's the content that's on my YouTube channel called Math Fully Explained. Thank you for viewing my video. 
hope the video was of some help to you and bye bye